run, 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 run. Boom, son. There comes the Balrog. Welcome to the quarterfinals of the World Championship 2022 for BFME 1 on a Pesu.2 on a beautiful map, Fear India. We will have a 1v1 matchup between the green Mordor player Donadine and his opponent, the red Gondor player Shanks. He's back. Yes, it's me, but unfortunately I was not able to record this video while playing it because I was super sick. I'm still sick, but I guess you guys already waited for a long time for a new video and I just didn't want you guys to wait any longer. Good against evil, El Clasico, Mordor, starting to creep this goblin layer in the middle of the map. Orc pit opening into the golem. And also Slaughterhouse in front, which is smart because Slaughterhouse is tankier compared to a Lumber Mill. It's harder to be destroyed. But it will go down anyway, because he has zero protection. The good thing is, it would be tough to protect the settlement in either way. Because the distance from this settlement to this beast is quite short. So this map should be favoring the good faction fa uh, fa faction player, more Gondor, in this case me. But Donadan is a very good player, smart player, expert player. So he knows what's up. And I think opening with a creep is going to be quite nice and rewarding. Because his orcs are going to hit level 2. That unlocks the black orcs. Or more DPS. And of course also extra resources going to be quite helpful for the Mordor faction. Remember Mordor faction is a faction that needs time to develop. Um, early game quite weak, mid game strong, late game unstoppable. You know it's very very strong faction. And here's a good looking base too. I mean, look what Gollum is doing. He's dancing around Rosie to deny me to, you know, capture the settlement. Very smart move. It's all about time management. It's about keeping your opponent units busy. Every second matters in this, you know, high skill level gameplay. From Dunedain. So I was able to kill the workers with my Hobbit Peregrine Took. But you can see the Orcs level 2, they are able to slaughter the farms. The 25% damage boost they get is kind of crazy. It will be also tuned down a bit in the following patches because this one is just too strong at this point. You know, the Orcs level 2 it can even 1v1 against the Uruk, which is a little bit too much. Stable after the blacksmith and two farms. And you can see he was also able to stop me from capturing this for a really long time, but soldiers are still way stronger compared to Orcs. And I'm all about hit level 2. One more hit. Yeah, let's go. And also the Hobbit coming to this spot just to cloak, so Mordor can't recapture this anytime soon. This farm has been destroyed. Mordor is trying to creep this, but he was trying to creep this, but Gondor Knights were just in time. It's important for the Gondor faction to creep as much as you can, because you need power points, either for the uh, Gan of the White power point, or for the Ranger Special Summon. Mordor Beast is not looking too bad. He needs one more Slaughterhouse, and then he will be eventually saving up for the Troll Cage. And also he's trying to creep with the Eye of Sauron. I see you. Okay, so as expected, in every single situation, Gondor is going to take over the game. After the first Gondor Knight, it's going to be hard for Mordor to contest this. That's why I personally like to play with Haradrim Palace, which gives a bit more early presence to the Mordor faction. But Dunedain, he doesn't like to do that. He want to go for the Trolls, which are stronger, but it will be costing you a bit more time, which means you need to sacrifice a lot of map control until you reach this power spike point. And look at this level 2 orc damage, dude. 25% <laughs> from this. Holy guacamole. So strong. Very, very strong. Okay, but look at the minimap, boys. Gondor is, of course, map control. He's creeping also. Mordor has only one settlement outside, but Troll Cage is going to be, of course, very helpful because the Troll is going to hard counter the Gondor Knights. Good looking beast for Gondor, too. Lots of money in the bank. And, you know, when you realize as Gondor player against Mordor, okay, he has trolls on the field and I'm not close to rangers, then you need to start um, changing your strategy. For that reason, I'm a big fan of ge getting to Gandalf the White Power Point and recruiting Gandalf because Gandalf has a big counter to pretty much everything Mordor has to offer in the early mid game. Late game, it's gonna be kind of rough because trolls, they become pretty much. Like little Balrogs, they will become immortals with the leadership they will get from the Witch King, Darkness, I, Drummer Troll. And not even Gandalf can hurt them anymore. But of course, what I'm talking about is an extreme lead game potential of Mordor, which is not easy to get to this point. I mean, I was also able to protect this settlement, I'm assuming. We have Farami on the field as a counter to trolls. 
I'm gonna use Warning Arrow here. It's gonna chunk the troll big time. But again, the troll has the ability to eat orcs and see, looks like meat's back on the menu, boys, and get back to full HP. Oh, we hear Peregrine Took screaming. We have also Boromir on the field. It's a great counter to trolls as well. He's committing to my farm here. But his brother is here to back him up. You better run, boy. Yeah, trolls are always perma charging, which is a huge buff to the modder faction. Earlier, they were only charging if they would get uh, if they would get the chance to target something, but they can also now charge when they are disengaging, which gives you much more room of gameplay with the mortal trolls. But you can see Boromir is hard countering these trolls, and Faramir can finish him off. The Brotherhood, you know, the captains of Gondor shining bright like a diamond. Shields purchase for tankiness, very close to Ranger's uh, power point, but I think Mordor is also very close to the Troll Cage level 2. Troll Cage level 2 means you will be able to recruit the Drummer Trolls, which are going to make your trolls like twice as strong. 50% armor, 50% damage increase, it's just too much. Even Rangers can't handle, handle this. And that comes the ranger summon from the Gondor player. But you can see Mordor is always demolishing everything just in the perfect time to deny Gondor experience and power points. This is extremely important because you know, I know, he knows, he, she, it knows how impactful the power points are in this game. It's a snowball effect. The power points, they will become very, very game deciding in the mid to late game. Especially power points like Eagles or AOD can be game winning, game changing. And for that reason, demolishing the buildings in time is the most important thing in this game. Slaughterhouse is not that important to be demolished, but sentry towers actually give a lot of power points, so you need to make sure to demolish certain buildings. In this case, we are talking about sentry towers, we are talking about nice. well statues in Boromir. I don't know why I don't why I didn't heal him, but I, I wanna <laughs> I want you guys to know that I was super sick when I was playing this game off stream. I made a lot of mistakes, but those mistakes actually made this game quite entertaining. I don't want to spoil too much because you will get the chance to see yourself. And also quick question to you guys in the comment section down below. Do you guys enjoy this kind of videos more in which I cast a replay? Or do you guys enjoy when it is from my own perspective, the POV perspective? Please let me know in the comment section down below. Alright, so we have Peregrine took back in the business, Archer range coming up for Gondor. And also look at that, would you look at this boys, Gandalf the Grey is being recruited. Unfortunately, we have not the power points for Ganoff the White. It means Ganoff the Grey is not very strong. He will deal 50% less damage or 100% less damage rather. But also most importantly, he will not be able to use the Easter Light, which is a big counter to trolls. So we can only blast them or lightning sword them. Blasting is not doesn't hurt that much and lightning sword is hard to land. It's a skill shot that you can eventually miss. And I did miss it, <laughs> indeed. Because trolls are so fast, it's hard to hit them. But, you know, Gondor has good map control. Hobbit will be able to capture this outpost too. And it's about, you know, it's about time to get Rangers. That's what you need. Also, Boromir level 4 is going to be very important. The damage leadership is the most important thing in this game. Yeah, you see the trolls are, they don't take too much damage from Gandalf. Visa Blast deals 100% less damage when you have no Gandalf the white power point. And Mordor is preparing. You know, Mordor unleashed very, very soon. At this point, Mordor has over 1,000 resources. He keeps recruiting more trolls and drummer trolls, but at some point of the game, he needs to save up for the Witch King of Engmar. Witch King will even make them stronger. He will deal even more damage. So basically, 50% from this dude, 50% from the Witch King means 100% more damage, 100% more armor for the trolls. And then Darkness, Eye of Sauron, pretty much you can reach insane numbers to make your trolls to better heroes. A one single troll can 1v1 Aragorn. Can you guys imagine that with this leadership? I mean, Mordor is a leadership based faction. Extremely late game heavy faction. Gondor has only one power point in the bank, so we need still a whole power point. You can see he's also using his orcs for scouting, workers to scout to get you know our vision around my beast. And he will not let us to <laughs> let us deal much more damage. The trolls are always perma chasing us, and he has even trolls with stones in their hands. Why are you asking? Glad you asking because troll with stone is actually hard countering heroes. Remember, Gandalf has to stop and stand still for a few seconds to cast his spell, and he's holding these trolls to throw rocks at me whenever I want to stop and cast a spell. That can actually one shot my Gandalf with I drama leadership. It's going to be quite insane. Boom! You can see he one shot at my Gondor Knights. That's how much damage it deals, even without the Witch King. Mordor is an outpost plus two settlements. Oops, <laughs> misclicked. 
It means you will get very soon to the Witch King house by industry, quite helpful. Look how much money you will get from this slaughterhouse. house. You see, 92, that's a lot of money. A marketplace here for the Gondor player. I was able to get Grand Harvest, Iron Ore, and also about to get Siege Materials. Remember, the Pesho Point 2, you can demolish the building after purchasing all the stuff you want, you need. And now we have Archer Range Level 2 for the Rangers. But I'm, you know, I can tell you one thing. In, at this point of the game, Gondor needs Stormworker. Because even if you have Rangers, Mordor has too many trolls, too much leadership, your rangers will need ages to kill them, and trolls can close the gap and the distance between themselves and your rangers in a few seconds. And once they get to your rangers, you can't disengage, because trolls are faster. So you need some sort of defensive capabilities in the Gondor castle, but luckily and fortunately, we are playing Gondor, and Gondor is the best defensive faction in the game. With a super important building which you will be able to see, in, uh, which you will be able to see shortly. Towering up, very important. I want to kill those units so Mordor has no vision control around my base. I don't want him to see my Stormworker. Which will eventually stop him from engaging to my base and kind of motivate him to recruit some catapults. Witch King is on his way. I'm still not gray, uh, white by the way. I'm still on gray, but fortunately we can get at least mounted. In the patch 1.06, Gandalf couldn't even get mounted when he was gray, which was a huge handicap for the Gondor faction. Because you invest 6,000 for a hero that can't be even mounted. That was a little bit too much. So now you can get mounted, but you can't use Easter Delight. It's a way of compensating this buff. Big fight. You see the trolls there. You have, you have no chance, you know. <laughs> it's just too much. But Boromir luckily was getting level 4. And then short, uh, shortly after, he got insta-killed. The Witch King is quite tanky. The trolls are extremely tanky. And in addition to that, they also hit like a truck. And now Mordor might get the chance to commit on me. He has almost the power points for Darkness. Remember, you need 7 power points for that. Rangers are getting slaughtered. Not even close. 2 drama Trolls, just in case one of them might die. They also give leadership to each other. So basically, the one drama Troll makes the other drama Troll tankier. And the same other way around. Which makes it hard for me to kill one of them. Oh boy. Stormworker, Battle Tower, Keep Archers captured. Boromir being revived. And I want him, I want him now to commit to my base. I mean, at this point, I'm kind of not very rich, even though I have Grand Harvest and multiple level 3 farms outside. But of course, I have enough money to build some towers, and that, that's the only way I can survive the situation. And almost at power point for Gan of the White. Very important. Look at these trolls, boys. Look at these big boys. I was able to catch a troll with Lightning Sword, and now I will have the power point for Gan of the White. But you can see the trolls, they don't even care about my laser towers. They still one-shot this. Look at this. <laughs> this is too much damage, boys. Holy cockamole. Darkness coming in clutch too. What is this? What is this, boys? <laughs> okay, we are, we are now getting off the white. You can see Easter Light. Look how much damage Easter Light deals. And they didn't even have leadership from Drummer Troll or Witch King. They, only from Darkness. Only from Darkness. But towers are dealing constant damage, of course. Shouldn't be ignored. But they can... 3 shot my battle towers. But luckily I have the upgrade from the marketplace with the siege materials. It means I get 50% of the investment back. This upgrade from the marketplace is super underrated. Because whenever your building gets destroyed, you get 50% of the initial investment back. And you can get this upgrade only for 500 from your siege wards, which is quite cost efficient too. It's very huge actually, because for example, if he destroys this building, I also get 50% of the money back. So he's committing now to my beast. My Gandalf can't approach this. Gandalf is a spell caster. It means when your spells are on cooldown, you are not very useful. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna fight those trolls in a fist, fist fight? Not recommended. But he's diving in too much, too deep. Boromir has leadership for 60% more damage. Rangers are countering the trolls. And for that reason, Mordor is forced to disengage. I mean, the good thing for the Gondor faction at this point is outpost control, good map control with multiple level 3 farms. So he's getting some money. Look him, you know, he was dancing around the rosy with the Witch King, so I can't study him. These trolls, if they get the chance to hit me twice, my Gandalf is gonna get insta-killed. 100 to 0 with like two swings of the tree in their hands. Very, very powerful creatures. And what Gondor has to do at this point is try to stall the game out until you get to Eagles. Eagles can hard counter pretty much everything beside combos from Mordor. Moomer kills can be countered, Witch King can be countered, and most importantly, those strong... The strong force, the primary army from the Mordor faction, the Trolls, can be countered too. 
Mordor has three power points in the bank. I have also three power points in the bank after the Rangers. You don't want to go for Cloud Break. You want to go for Eagles. That's very important. Eagles are the best summon in the game beside Balrog and AOT. Way better than ends in most situations. But I have no defense around this area. So it's bad. <laughs> but I have a Ranger army and a half, dude. I have like lots of Rangers on the field. Unfortunately, they are all, all level 2 only. And remember the levels in this game, they actually matter a lot. A level means you basically deal like 20% more damage all of a sudden. Imagine a level 10 unit can 1v5 five, five the level 2 units. That's how much more strong you will get. Beautiful looking map. I mean, the river is not looking, you know, very good. But this is the best you can get actually in BFM1. It's also a unique map from the patch 2.22. The plan is to get a ranger inside the outpost. It's very important. So if the outpost has some sort of self-defense. Statue behind is going to make the rangers inside also stronger. But look at the trolls, man. He has an army of trolls. Moment kill plan coming up for Mordor next. 3 power points, 3 power points. So we need still 3 power points for the eagles. 6 power points required in total. And even though it sounds slim, but I need to camp it out. There is no way I can fight this troll army in an open field. So what you need to do at this point is think smart and act i mean think good and act smart it's very important because one single mistake can make you lose the game mordor is committing to this outpost now with three trolls witch king leadership um rangers they don't deal too much damage when they have no statue behind and look at this they don't even shoot they're not shooting <laughs> okay the nazgul witch king i'm trying to destroy this outpost but it's hard to do that with only gondor knights and, you know, sending Gondonites solar out is going to do nothing but feeding power points. Remember, when we reach the point of Nazgûs and Witch King in a game against Mordor, it's hard to compete with the map control fights against Mordor. You can't be with Gandalf everywhere, and Mordor can have two Nazgûs and one Witch King, which are extremely mobile. They can always catch up to your Gondonites, and you can't play against that. So when you try to compete with, for the map control regardless, what will happen is you will feed lots of power points and you will help Mordor to reach to Balrog's power spike way way faster and that's nothing we want because Balrog has the potential to end this game and we are trying to avoid this from happening I mean ranges are such a cool unit dude it's unbelievable they've also bought me leadership but look how many trolls Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? Alright. So he has also Orc Archer Hort, of course. He's gonna make combos because, again, Donadan is expert player. He knows I might be close to Eagles in that you need to counter the stuff from your opponent before it, ha before it happens. You understand? You don't wanna make combos after the Eagles got special summon. That's gonna be waste. You wanna make it... When you, when you play this game for a long time, then you have like a feeling about the power points your, pow your opponent might have. You wanna play... You want to think like two steps ahead, you know? Uh oh, like I do, for example. I make like an ambush here. Rangers here, rangers here, you see? Trying to put them, get them into an ambush situation. Because I can't sit and just fight. That's not possible. Boromir has to be careful. Lightning Swap from Ganda from downtown. Even here, trolls are still smashing. But our towers, rangers from behind and on top of the wall are dealing constant damage. It's a campy play style, which is, which is sadly required. Because I just give Mordor too much time. And that's what happens if you give Mordor too much time. 7 power points after the darkness. And I got 5 power points after the rangers in Gan of the White. So I have two choices when you play Gondor. You can either go for the Cloud Break for 7 power points. Or you need to go for the Eagles with 6 power points. Cloud Break is actually buffed in the patch 2.22. It can stun the enemy units. Even trolls get stunned when they have no fear resistance. With level 1 they will be stoned. They will not be able to move. But... When you have not enough damage output to kill them while they are stunned, the Cloud Plague is not going to do much for you. So, Eagles, definitely much more damage power on the table. Oh boy, he's committing. But Witch King is committing a little bit too much, so I can turn and now Easter him. And that's going to be my plan. Witch King is an extremely important hero. Now that's a lot of damage! And Gandalf is seeing. I'm a servant of the Secret Fire, the flame, and the servant of the... Flame of Arnor. Darkfire will not avail you, Witch King of Engmar. And Witch King has been slain. Witch King can be revived for free. And you can see Dunedain is extremely fast. He's going to insta-revive him the second he dies. It's very important. Because again, at high skill level gameplay, every second matters. Witch King can be revived for free. But it will take you 3 minutes. Which is a long time. And that's for me to the, the time to shine. 
because Mordo knows he's now weaker. I know Mordo is weaker. And now I need to try to use this three minutes of window to punish my opponent to regain some map control. Because at this point I have no outpost control. Outpost control is extremely important against evil factions because if you have no outpost control and they get to Balrog summon, you will lose the game. So the only counterplay to uh, Balrog is when you have outpost control and map control generally. Look at this units, dude. So strong. Holy crap, Molly. But Boromir is a tanky boy. Level 7 unlocks the Forgondor ability, which is like an active uh, spell to make your units a bit stronger, more damage. That's going to be also very important to deal a bit more damage to the trolls and Mumma Kills. You need a lot of Mumma Kills to get this thing to level 3, but once it's level 3, every unit you will produce from it is going to be automatically level 2, which also enables the self-regeneration for the Mumma Kills. You can see here still a huge troll army, which is super hard to be dealt with. I have like a camp situation here, trying to set up an ambush. You can see I have like I'm hiding with the rangers. I have like a ranger army here at this point, but I'm hiding in the trees. That's like the passive from the rangers around the trees. They get invisible. You can't even see them on the minimap, as you can see, or as you can't see, rather. Eagles have been special summoned. I was able to kill a couple of the trolls, but you can see the few archers, even the archers on top of the moment kill. Look how much damage they are dealing to my eagles. But I, I think it was still worth it because it's all about fishing power points. I know I need AOD to, you know, win this game. He knows he needs Baldrog to win this game. So at this point, it's going to become a race for the power points. Outpost control secured. So I'm trying to now secure multiple outposts. Ideally, I want to have both of, the, both of the outposts under my control before I can make a move to the main castle. This outpost is going to be very important. Why? Because this is close to the enemy castle, so I can fight and peel back whenever I need to, to heal up to full HP, to have a bit more leadership around this outpost with the statue behind. So it's all about having strate strategically important areas captured. You can see I have a ranger army at this point, you know. And still ranges here in the ambush formation, on top of the wall, even below the wall. So it's all about beating him in into a follow situation he needs to follow me i am you know setting up an ambush to have a bit more damage output just like in the mission south and italy you know pretty much set up an ambush to have a bit more firepower spread it out through the entire map because you know when you want to be when you are in the same location against more of the trolls remember they have like splash damage it means whenever they get to you they hit you one time with their three in their hands they will be able eventually to kill like two battalions with one swing he killed the arches on the of the wall or on top of the outpost Shield bubble to deny damage income. So that's a 99% armor and damage reduction. And he's also becoming immune to knockbacks. Okay. There comes the darkness. He has also army here. He's going to commit to my outpost actually with the massive trolls and moment kills. Ranger inside is dealing still a lot of damage. But you can see the trolls are just too tanky with drama troll witch king. One of them has been still taken down. Demolishing the buildings, again, very important because we are trying to deny power points. And again, statue, well, towers are giving too many power points. Nazgûs are committing to this area. Boromir, I'm trying to knock down the troll. That's, a, that's why Boromir is such a great counter to trolls too. Because even though he doesn't deal too much damage to them, as you can see, he's still able to knock them down on the ground. Disabling the troll for a few seconds might bring you the advantage in this fight. Boromir level 6 now has the glory of Gondor for the pillage so you get money for more money for killing stuff but at this point we are just swapping outposts as you can see i'm going to the outpost at the bottom left side he's capturing this one so we are kind of trading sides and that's not what i'm trying to look for <laughs> i'm trying to look for advantage but going one for one is no advantage not for me and also not for the model player donadine but the good thing is we have a lot of money we are repairing the wall you know the iron ore is coming in clutch for the blacksmith resources Level 3 buildings outside. Mordor is also having a lot of money. 12,000. I have 6,000. So money is not a problem. It's like a whole and full late game potential of the Gondor against Mordor situation. But again, this map is not very good for Mordor. It's not that big. The bigger the map is, the better it is for the Mordor. But Dunedin is still doing a phenomenal job. Despite having a bad matchup, actually. And also, I don't want to spoil too much, but we played the quarterfinals. I was able to win 3-2. So I'm in the semifinals now. I will be playing my semi-finals games today. And then hopefully, after winning this one, we might get to the finals of the winner bracket. But even if I win the tournament, I will not 
uh, get the cash prize for myself. I want to give it away to the other people who are playing in this tournament just to have like a way of saying thank you for participating, for playing. It was an honor having 36 people from all around the world participating in a BFME 1 tournament in 2022. I think that's a great achievement for this community. And thank you guys also for watching, for all the support, by leaving a like to this video, making the effort to go on my Twitch channel, follow me there, you know, watch my Twitch live streams, really means a lot. You guys are making this possible. Thank you guys, appreciate every single one of you. You can see it, but you, you see what I'm talking about? Because I'm not that mobile and I can't really split up my army into two pieces. We are on, only swapping outposts. So I'm going to this, he's going to this. I'm going to this, he's going to this, you know? It's like Tom and Jerry, cat and mouse. But this army is looking extremely strong, you know, two Momo kills. What is the Momo kill pen level? It's actually level still one. Industry has been used, 92 resources you gain. That's a lot of money. And Mordor is committing. I have Eagles back up. And there is only one combo, but also the Mumma kill has archers with fire arrows on top of the Mumma kill. Which you can't target, by the way. You can't target them. They become untargetable. They deal constant damage, a lot of damage, because Drama Troll is buffing them too. Uh oh! Be careful, Gandalf! Okay. You can see how tanky this thing is. Even Wanding Arrow from Farami doesn't chunk him anymore. With Witch King leadership. That's unbelievable. Outposts will be captured now by Gondor once again. Oh, but you see my ambush is coming in clutch. Look, I have ambush everywhere, my friend. Like, rangers pretty much located everywhere. You see this? He doesn't see them because the passive from the uh, rangers makes them invisible around the trees. And killing each of these moment kills is so rewarding too because we get a lot of power points that will bring us one step closer to the army of the dead. Oh, but you can see the rangers squad, you know, 1v1 situation has no match, has no chance. Uh oh I could have maybe killed him if I was paying attention. It was really close. There comes the darkness for the third time. The Nazgul is being chunked. And he's commenting onto my outpost. My ranges, my eagles are on cooldown. And I still need five power points for my UD. Instant demolish, that's very important. And also very smart from Donadan. You see, he's instantly focusing the statue from two reasons. Reason number one, it gives a lot of power points. Reason number two, it makes my army way stronger. So you want to try to destroy the things which are making the army stronger. That's why in a big fight, you want to try to focus on the heroes because the heroes most of the time are offering leadership to make the opponent army stronger and you killing the heroes is going to weaken them. Look at this. Again, we are trying to bring him into an ambush situation. We have rangers hiding around the trees pretty much all over the place, even here. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know if you guys enjoy this kind of play style, but that's what required what is required to win against Mordor in late game with the Gondor faction. Because even if you have like 10 ranges in one location, it's not gonna do much for me. The, the Mumma kill charges, so I need to... That's why you need damage leadership against Mordor. You wanna burst them before they can make it to you. If they make it to you, your damage output is meaningless because they will one-shot you. Trolls deal too much damage against units, even against heroes. That's why Rohan is better against Mordor. With the Rohir Marcha, you are mobile. You can keep the distance. You can keep poking, kiting, hitting and running. That's an option Gondor sadly doesn't have. That's why you need to set up an ambush like that in order to win against Mordor in the lead game. But I will be able to destroy this outpost. I know it's important because Mordor is getting very close to the Baldrog power spike. He's only 7 power points away from summoning. Oh, that was close. You see? You see what am I supposed to do here? They are diving in and I need to bail now. I'm bringing my Boromir. Again, heroes are very really important. I think my Farami got killed, right? Yeah, Farami got killed instantly pretty much. And Mordor getting lots of power points. I'm trying to put him into an ambush formation, ambush situation. But he's not falling for it anymore, of course. He's smart. He saw it happening a couple of times and he won't. You know, <laughs> try it again. It's lots of money for Mordor. He has double movement kill pen, but he has no command points. That's the problem. Because, you know, even when you have, like, an unlimited amount of money, you have not unlimited amount of command points. Same also for Gondor, right? You have also a lot of money at this point. Marketplace helps. We have Numenorian no Stormworker, even the improved gate. So we are reaching now the whole potential from the Gondor faction with Rangers, Gondor Knights, Gandalf, Farami, Boromir, leadership, power points from the Spellbook. Double Siege coming up for Mordor. Oh, but you can see 
The bottom immediate ship is quite helpful. Mumma Kill is trying to make it, but Mumma Kill won't make it. We also get money for killing those units. The Nazgus are committing now, trying to put them into an ambush situation. They're gonna just disengage now. I will miss the Lightning Sword. What a massacre! What a fiesta! The Drama Troll is gonna int his way. The... Run, 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 run! Can of all run into it? Okay, Mumma Kill has been killed. Seven power points in the bank. All right, all right, all right. It is not over until it's over, boys. It is not over until it's over. Three power points away from the EOT. Five power points away from the Balrog. Again, it's very important to not let Mordor get Balrog before you have EOT. That's very important. Looking for a visa plus. Boom, son. Don't die again off to white. Heal is going to be used just for the worst case scenario. Because I forgot to mention, but Tunadain, the Mordor player is on host. And the game was quite leggy for me when I was playing it. Because Dunedain is from India, I'm from Germany, the distance is quite big, the game is old, there are no gaming servers. Long story short, it was a laggy gaming experience, he's gonna use land, I can cover the land. Eagles being special summoned, I'm trying to chase the Nazgûs, but Nazgûs are just too mobile, it looks like they will get away. 16 power points versus 8, 2 power points versus 4, for the ultimate big summon. Faramir is back in the business, level 5, Boromir level 6. So we are as strong as Gondor potentially can get. You can't get any stronger than that. That's not true. Boromir can still be level 7 for even stronger leadership. But army-wise, money-wise, hero-wise, that's pretty much it. Okay, eagles are gone. Mumakil pen is level 2. Still needs a lot of Mumakils to get it to level 3. They cost a lot of command points. They will be reduced, by the way. They cost currently 50 command points, but they will only cost you 40 in the following version. Because, I, you know, in this game I've also seen the lack of command points for Gondor and also Mordor. The money is gonna be unlimited. Look at look the money we have. But we can't do anything with this money at this point. What are we gonna do? We have 25,000, but we have no command points anymore. So, money is very good in the late game. But it's not very useful because you can't effectively use the resources you gather. Okay, so maybe I could make this double, double, um, seat. Double archer range, double steeple. But, you know, you will still encounter the problems in the command points department. Because it was, it was always like this in BFME 1. Uh, the good faction, uh, the evil faction has twice the command points available compared to a good faction. They increase the command points in the patch point to from 200 to 250 and from 400 to 500. So you can now make bigger armies. The reason why the command points were so low at the beginning in BFME 1 was because of the... Um, PCs back in the day, they couldn't handle too many units, but now we are in 2022, the game is, uh, everybody has, not everybody, but most people have like a better PC. For that reason, it's good. So, um, very close to EOD, and Mordor is at around 18 power points. You can see, it's hard to contest this, Mumma kill troll combination. Drama troll, always keep a drama troll with the trolls, it's very important, which King Nazgûs committing to that outpost. He's trying to repair and keep me busy. I'm trying to, but look this, you want to, you want to, you see bottom, you, that's, that's what you want to do. You want to kill the moment kill before it can get to you. That's why you need a huge army. Unfortunately for me though, I have not like highly leveled rangers. It's, it requires a lot of experience to level up the rangers way more than normal regular archers, like Gondor archers, Yeoman archers, crossbowmen, or even the, uh, say it, orc archers. So rangers need a bit more time to level up, but when they level up to level 10, they can one shot, they can one shot witch king. That's why quality beats quantity in this game. The levels, they are quite meaningful and extremely important too. So the first time I've ever, I will be able to attack the beast from my opponent. Because I know I've clo I'm close to EOD. I want to hold it. I want to I wanna use it whenever I see a huge army from him. So, big commitment. Mordor is one power point away from his Baldrog. Again, here it's very important. Oh, that was close actually, but he got to kill so many Gondor Knights, so many Gondor Knights. He's very close to Balrog. We killed the Mumma kill, the Witch King is getting bullied too. I don't want to lose my Gandalf though. He has still the outpost with Triple Siege Works here, but he's encountering command points problems. He can't reproduce any more units because the Mumma kills, yes, they are very strong, but they also require a lot of command points from your limit, so you can't spam them endlessly. Nazgul is back in the business. Very close to Balrog, very, very close to Balrog. I will be able to kill this moment kill. Faramir, actually showing his quality big time in this game. For Gondor ability unlocked for even more damage output. Which, by the way, scales with this one. So, you have 120% damage leadership. Even though the last one is only for a short duration, for 25 seconds. But there comes the Balrog! 
will be used defensively to wipe out my army big commitment from the nazgus and i will have to give up i don't want to use my ild yet because i don't want to use it to kill baldrog which has been summoned kind of defensively baldrog is going to be used to breath fire it's going to ignite first ignite also buffs the damage from the breath fire by the way so everything this one this one i mean this one and this one will deal now 50 200 percent more damage so the most important thing when you play, play with baldrog you want to use ignite ignite has 10 seconds cooldown but it lasts for 30 seconds so you should you don't want to overdo it you understand you don't want to you don't want to ignite while you are already ignited that would be not time efficient because the baldrog duration is only one minute and five seconds so you want to use every single second wisely i summon the eagles i want to trade the outpost at this point but i have not many ranges left on the field anymore my heroes are luckily able to survive but Mordor will be able to destroy this outpost I've also, again, I was never sending my whole army, and that's a mistake most people are doing. You want to always have, like, a plan B. Plan B is, when my army falls, when I lose my army, I have, like, a backup army that I can get to, you know? I have, I don't lose momentum. That's very important. So, Balrog, of course, because, has, because he has been used defensively, couldn't achieve too much in the main castle. That's good for me. Full bees. The statue here is there out of two reasons. Reason number one, it gives leadership, of course. And the reason number two is it is it has like a small and tiny hitbox that Balrog can't reach when he's breath firing. So I'm preparing this for the eventual Balrog summon so he can't hit my statue. There are some units or buildings with tinier hitbox. So you need to get closer to it to land. Breath fire can't reach this. Which is good to counter the Balrogs. So he's hiding his army, and again, I want to show you guys my own perspective of vision. So that's what I'm able to see at this point. I see here something because of my ranges, so I'm summoning EOD to actually kill this movement kills. I, I only see this what I see in my screen, but I don't see this coming now from the other side. That was surprising me big time, and you can see very sneaky and also brilliant move from Dunedain. Uh, my ranges, because they were on one single location, they got extremely wiped out and slaughtered. Here it's lagging for me hardcore, if I remember correctly. I mean, the whole gaming experience in this game was quite laggy for me. My units wouldn't want to listen to me, you know, when I want to say go back, engage, attack, disengage. So you needed to click multiple times, which caused this problem over there. And move a kill, wiping out not only my Gandalf, but my whole Gondor knight army. And I think this all alone gave more those seven power points, dude. Nazgul is back, Moment Kill Pen is level 3 now, you can see every Moment Kill coming now will be first of all recruit way faster. So 60 seconds normally build time for a Moment Kill will only be 30 seconds with level 3. This building is going to be extremely tanky, 7000 HP, HP, which is of course a lot. And most importantly, they get level 2 immediately for more tankiness and more damage output. You can see, for example, this Moment Kill level 6 has 4220 HP, just so you understand my point of view. 4,220 HP is more than a Witch King, for example, right? It's a lot, really, really a lot. Ranges, it doesn't even show, but a building here has 5,000 HP, for example. So this is, is quite tanky, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so more Mumakis are being recruited, Mordor. Wasn't able to destroy this outpost, it's good for me. I need outpost control, because at this point I know he has Balrog. And again, against Baldrog, the only counterplay you have, I mean, you can try to go for a risky play with Gandalf, but it's quite risky because he can turn and wipe you in one single pew, and you are dead. So, I, I don't want to risk this, you know, with my Gandalf. I already lost him one time now. It takes me also lots of time to revive him. He was level 9. So it will take me 3 minutes to get him back uh, to the game, which is a long time, you know, <laughs> which is a long time, actually, in this game. Scavenger. Mordor has like three power points which are money making for him. Industry, scavenger, and devastation. So it should not be a problem for him to keep making more army. Remember, he needs to invest 2000 for each moment kill, which is a lot of cash, but no problem for the Mordor faction. Committing. You can see it's also very tanky. Which king is committing to? Land. You see plus 20 E for killing those rangers. The more expensive the unit you are killing is, the more rewarding the scavenger is going to be. I was, I will still be, I think, able to kill this moment kill. No, it's almost dead, but I don't have damage anymore here. Only Boromir remaining. But, of course, I wasn't reviving my Gandalf at the outpost. It would be a big mistake. You always want to revive your important heroes in your main castle. As, for example, also, that's why you need to build your important structures, like 
archery range or stable in your main castle, which is of course a way greater protection compared to your outpost. Ganaf is back in the business, level 9. Uh, level 10, not very useful in this matchup. The water power doesn't really do much against monsters like Mumakil's Trolls, it doesn't hurt them that much. And also EOD is the least impactful against Mordor, the least. Because the EOD can't kill, of course, uh, the Nazgûl's and Witch King. I missed my Lightning Sword, it's embarrassing, I know. I missed it so many times this game. I'm trying to beat him in, so the second he will stop chasing me, I will turn and kill him. It's my plan, right? And he knows that. I'm trying to, you know, beat him in, and he will get killed by the rangers on top of the wall. Beautiful. So, AOD is almost available, but Balrog is going to be available sooner. Outpost control, double outpost control for Mordor. But remember, EOD and also the Balrog has been nerfed in the patch 2.2. They are not very strong. They are still very, very strong. The strongest summons by far in the game, but not that strong anymore like they used to be. Because I always disgrace the idea of being able to win or lose the game because of one single summon. It's a very snowball game at the first place. I know these summons need to be strong, but they shouldn't be able to single-handedly win you the game. So they should be able to kill you either a couple of buildings or your army, but not whole, your whole castle. Um, and AOD's damage against buildings has been nerfed dramatically. So basically AOD now deals like 50% less damage to the buildings. And Balrog doesn't one-shot level 3 production buildings anymore. You can still one-shot this uh, blacksmith level 3 in well, statue, citadel, but you can't one-shot. And he summoned Balrog also at the outpost, uh, which again is a bit mistake uh, because I thought he would be able to protect this. He even <laughs> knocked his own troll down. Balrog is flying, but he's wasting time as you can see. A quarter, more than a quarter of his time is gone. He's gonna land on the citadel, use ignite of course, he's still ignited. Um, he needs two shots to kill the citadel and now breath fire. You will see what the statue was good for, boys. You see, he was not able to reach the statue. All part of a plan. You can't one-shot the archer range level 3 either. Without ignite, you need like four, sh four hits to kill this. You need to ignite yourself, which again, look at this damage now, boom, you see? With ignite, you can two-shot it. Without ignite, you will need like four or five sh shots. So ignite is very important and he's now just wasting time. He will not, he will not be able to finish off my castle. The statue, you see, it's a 200 IQ play, my friend. Whenever you play Gondor against Mordor and you see him summoning Balrog, demolish the building here at this spot, here, and build the statue there. It's hard, almost impossible to breath fire this. Look how tanky this level 6 movement kill is. Holy crap, holy. Okay, so now I'm trying to, of course, get some map control. I'm planning to destroy this one first. I think this one is going to be the priority because it's closer to the enemy castle. I know I have an EOD advantage. He knows that too. He knows my AOD is very close or already available, so you need to play around this. Um, it's hard, again, that's very hard to play around EOD or Balrog because these summons have like no downsides. They are just way too powerful in this game. I've hoped, I've, I wish it would be possible to rework them in a way so you can outplay this, but you actually can't. Um, you know, in a one-on-one -on -one situation it's okay, but in a free-for-all match the Balrog has been always devastating. Imagine you are playing Rohan against, you know, Mordor Isengard, you have, you have like a crazy game, you know, in free for all, and there are no outposts in the, in free for alls. In one v ones you have outpost map, but in free for alls you don't. And an evil faction opponent gets Balrog, he could in 1.06 kill your whole base easily, not even not even close, like easily you can wipe out Gondor and Rohan base even twice. That's just too powerful, you know. Okay, so I, he knows I have AOD. I'm gonna try to not use it, I think here. Again, level, to level 10 wouldn't matter that much. I'm also trying to attack this outpost simultaneously. Diving in a little bit, but I see the army is not very strong. I want to kill this Mumma kill first, though. Always keep an eye on the Mumma kill. That's the, that's the one you want to kill first, so you want to disengage. You see Faramir running for his life, and then once the charge is over, we can turn and kill him. Faramir's warning arrow, as you can see, deals bonus damage to Nazgûl's, Eagles, and Monsters. It also includes the Mumma kills. It's actually quite effective. And you can see, you want to bully him before he can make it to you. That's very important. With damage leadership from Boromir, it's definitely possible. We have also the Fort Gondor for even more da damage output. And most importantly, our rangers are leveling up to a decent level. Or even more DPS. Kills another movement kill here. We are still holding on AOD. I want to use it in the best possible way to get the best out of it. You need to understand that EOD and also Balrog, they have 8 minutes cooldown. So you don't want to waste your EOD and Balrog. You want to use it in the best possible way. 
So you can achieve a lot of, with that, you know? Look at this. You see? Kite. But he has so many of them. He made a mistake that he brought them back to back to back. You know, he didn't come simultaneously. When he comes with three of them at the same time. EOD? Yeah, EOD. Beautiful. Like, the production of the Mooma Kills is kind of crazy. Level 3 Mooma Kill Pen is producing them like <laughs> crazy, dude. 30 seconds for this big creature. But EOD is making it like in the films, you know, kind of climbing up the Mooma Kill. I like that. I, re I mean, I'm always surprised. I'm still surprised, even after so many years, for a game that was made in 20 and, uh, 2004. This game is still so phenomenal. It was so ahead of its time, boys. Let me know in the comment section down below if you agree with me or if you are saying, nah, BFME is not such a good game. I think it is. <sighs> oh, that was risky, dude. That was risky. Look, they don't want to listen. Balrog, uh, I mean, Gandalf almost got stomped for the second time from the Moomai Kill, but fortunately, we destroyed the Moomai Kill pen, which means less production speed. He loses now 30 seconds. The Witch King is getting bullied. Cloud Break, just to reduce the armor. You can't stun the Moomai Kills. They are, you know, immune to fear and stun. But you can reduce their movement speed and armor with the Cloud Break. I want to destroy this so he can't revive his Nazgûs. He was reviving them at the... No, he was reviving them at the outpost, actually. Very smart move. Boom. The Witch King is coming. Flying by. Insta-focus him. Insta-kill him. And that should be the game, boys. What a game, man. Ambushing, Stoneworker, Balrog, Mooma Kill, Killing Gandalf, Witch King, AOD, Boromir Leadership, Forgone Durability... Everything turned into this awesome game and hopefully you guys enjoyed this game If you did don't forget to leave a like on this video subscribe for more videos like this in the future I will see you next time until then take care of yourself keep hitting like a truck and as always boys stay beyond standards peace out